What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you guys here today. I want to go ahead and give you guys four very important tips that will definitely help all of you guys who are getting ready to purchase your first home. First, you're going to want to have steady income and at least two years worth of W-2s to reflect that. Number two, you're going to want to have good credit. Prior to all this pandemic, the requirements were standing at a 580 for first time homeowners. Our loan officer had mentioned to us that those requirements had been tweaked a bit and they were currently sitting around a 620 for first time homeowners. Third, you're going to want to make sure that you have a good debt to income ratio. And for example, if your monthly take home pay is around $2,000 and you pay $500 per month in debt loans and credit credit cards, perhaps you have a car loan, then you would divide that by your take home pay. In this case, you will have a debt to income ratio of 25%. The less debt you have, the better. The fourth tip that I want to go ahead and include, being able to have at least the down payment saved up. Now this may or may not be needed depending on what kind of loan you can qualify for, but it's always good in the worst case scenario to have at least the down payment saved up. Depending on what loan you are qualifying for there are different requirements for example on an FHA loan the down payment requirement is a three and a half percent of the purchase price for a conventional loan that can be a three percent all the way up into a 20 percent depending on your specific situation now if you qualify for a VA loan a veterans loan your down payment can be literally zero percent of the purchase price and if you qualify for a USDA loan, which is more for rural areas, your down payment can also be 0% down. I would also highly suggest that you save up one to 6% of the purchase price of the home. And in those closing costs would be origination fees, bank fees, the loan fees, all kinds of different fees that they will include. And remember, that's if you have to pay closing costs. You may get a really sweet deal where you pay close to or nothing of the closing costs and the seller will take care of it or they will give you certain credits. After you have these four things ready to go, I would suggest going and getting pre-approved. Once you receive your pre-approval letter, you're ready to go shopping. Time out, I just wanna go ahead and cut in. Remember, just because you got approved for a much greater amount, doesn't always necessarily mean that you have to max that out and go with the most expensive house that can meet that. I would always recommend to sit down with your spouse or your partner and setting up a budget and also creating a list of priorities from most important to least important for your first house. Sometimes less is more. You definitely don't want to overextend yourself. If you do, you will be doing something that I like to call living to pay the mortgage. I recommend that your PITI or principal interest taxes and insurance are no more than one third of your monthly income. This way you will have more money left over to breathe and live a more comfortable frugal lifestyle and still afford to continue saving money and investing for the future versus you having to play keep up paying the mortgage and every other bill and expense that comes with it. People who do this typically live a lifestyle that I like to call the rat race. And you may have heard of this before. It is a human mindset of earning more money to sustain an ever increasingly extravagant lifestyle. That in a sentence seems very tiring and very stressful. It's pretty much when somebody is just living to pay off their debt. Why buy expensive things to simply impress people you don't really care about? And if you do truly care about those people, trust me, you don't need to buy expensive things or go on luxurious vacations to impress these people. If you're truly trying to stand out and impress other people and to be different, be more kind, be more helpful, be a better person. To avoid all these things, guys, don't overextend yourself sit down with your wife or your spouse and carefully analyze your budget a few days before your closing date you should receive a closing disclosure form now make sure you read through this thoroughly and go over the numbers and double check with your spouse and with your realtor to make sure that everything that was discussed negotiated and agreed upon is in writing remember if it's not in writing 
unfortunately it almost doesn't even count. Guys, if there's anything that I want for you guys to take from this video, anything at all, it would be the follow. That if you set goals and make plans and work towards those goals each and every day, I promise you guys will achieve your goal. Don't allow little bumps on the road to discourage you guys. Trust me, I've been there. I know what that feels like. But I promise you that in the end, it will be so worth it. So do it. What's holding you back from writing down those goals and making plans to achieve them in this upcoming year of 2021? Well, there you have it, guys. These are my four important tips that I want to give you guys in preparation to becoming a homeowner. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and do me a favor. Hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting more content. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Comment down below what other kind of video you guys Guys would like to see for any questions or inquiries feel free to dm me on my instagram have a great day guys and be prudent